But Purdue Boilermakers split a pair of games last week, beating Minnesota Thursday night at Mackey Arena behind a triple-double from Janae Terry, only the fourth in program history. And then the Boilermakers yesterday couldn't overcome a first-half deficit and lost to Nebraska to go to 13-8 and eight on the season. Two more games coming up this week in the Big Ten. On Thursday night, Northwestern will come in for a 7 p.m. tip. And then Sunday, the Boilermakers travel down to Bloomington. That'll be a 1 o'clock tip in Assembly Hall. Good evening, everybody, from Wolfie's in West Lafayette. It is the Katie Gerald Show. We'll be talking with the Boilermaker head coach here for the next hour. Also joining us a little bit later on in the program will be freshman guard Jayla Smith. You can listen to us here on Bob FM and or tune into the Facebook site on the Purdue Athletics page and watch us and uh, give us your questions. Let us know where you're calling from and uh, tell us if snow is headed your way because we know it's headed our way. So we'll get a weather update as we go along too. We'll have the coach with us. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. Right after this, this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Tried to get the rebound, but Boilermakers recover Madison Layden on a fast break here. Jayla Smith puts it up with the right hand for two. Easy bucket before that timeout. 5.43 left to play here in the first half. Trapped near the baseline. Deja Winters going to take it herself. Boilermakers with some strong defense. Big toss. Abby Ellis foul and gets the bucket. All game long, but Winters recognizes it, seals it off, gets the steal, and gets the bucket. What was an eight-point lead comes back to seven. So maybe that'll look out of fire in this offense. Intercepted by Madison Layden. She's going to look to reset the offense here. Quick pass out to Terry. Harden from three. Knocks it down. Now Golden Gophers have to weather the storm here that Purdue put up getting themselves back into this game. Layden with the right hand behind her back. That was filthy. She's had a stellar night. Janae Terry also got the seventh triple-double in Boiler history earlier this year as Jayla Smith knocks down a long two. Well, the floodgates have opened here for Minnesota on offense, Alex. Now the defense has to come along and get some stops. Gophers five for their last six. Brooke Moore. Abby Ellis coming in with the rebound. Beautiful effort. She takes it all the way herself. Ellis. This is a huge possession for the Golden Gophers. Need some points. Madison Layden picked that one off as Misha tried to dump it out to the corner. Janae Terry, good for two, and that's a triple-double for Janae Terry. Layden working the top of the arc. She's going to take a deep shot and six it. Just a few moments ago, got her second triple-double of the year. Add a block onto that stat sheet. Dump in. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. Now we're going to have a couple of former Indiana Miss basketballs on the show tonight. Our head coach Katie Gerald's is one and Jayla Smith was last year's Miss Basketball. We actually have another Miss Basketball in the audience tonight. Brittany Birch. Brittany Rayburn to you from Attica High School and her husband Tim and their couple of kids are over off to our left. So if we could give them a big round of applause. Great to have Brittany here tonight. And uh, Dr. Birch to Dr. us. Birch. Dr. Birch. She'll take care of all your pets for you. Uh, let's talk about the uh, Boilermakers. Katie, an up and down week a little bit. A good win on Thursday night. So let's start with the positive note. Uh, I thought probably or maybe your best top to bottom performance of your top eight players. A really total team effort to beat Minnesota on Thursday. Yeah, we needed all of it too. Um, Abby and Brooke both caught foul trouble. Uh, J-Lo was really special for us. Ava was efficient off the bench. Um, you know, then Mad Cash, JT, Ricky all did what they're supposed to do. And, you know, honestly, uh, besides the little laps there in the second quarter, it's probably our most complete game that we've, we've put together. You know, we look at, a lot of times we see shooters get into zones. You had it. Uh, you know, I think of all the great shooters. Brittany Rayburn was one. Jody Howell. And you can go on down the line. Courtney Moses. I thought that Janae Terry got into a passing zone in the third quarter Thursday night, unlike anything I've ever seen. You scored six buckets coming out of halftime, and she assisted on all six. Yeah, it, you know, we, we kind of challenged her there in the second quarter. The ball, <clears throat> excuse me, the ball was just kind of sticking in her hands a little bit. Uh, a little too much dribble, but, 
you know, she, it, that's not just her fault. We've got to move well off of her because she does want to make the pass, and she's such a willing passer. Um, and, and honestly, we came out with made shots, but she was, you know, Ricky ran the floor hard, got in transition, Cass made a three, I think Mad makes a three, um, and the ball just moved, and, you know, it, it, Janae is Janae. You know, we see it with the men's basketball team. Travion Williams is such a great passer from the post. that His teammates have to be aware of him at all times and look for opportunities. I think it's the same with Janae because you never know. She's going to look for somebody cutting to the basket. Basket, but she has an ability to find people in a spot where they want to catch the ball. Yeah, that's what she, I just think she wants to put her little goggles up every time she makes an assist. I think that's what she's hunting for every game. But, um, you know, it, it's crazy because you, you, you think of somebody who gets a triple-double and you never think that the points is the last one to come. Yeah. And, and that's what happens with Janae because she rebounds it so well and her court vision just makes everybody else around her. Yeah, I saw everybody on the bench groaned. I think she was close to that triple-double. She had eight points and she was ahead of the pack on a fast break and I can't remember who had the ball, but they didn't quite see her in time. And you could hear her teammates screaming. You could hear everybody in crowd screaming. Everybody in the arena knew that Janae needed the basketball, except for the person with the ball in her hands. Yeah, and, and honestly, like that, we, we try to preach. You just, just play basketball, right? Um, you know, obviously, you guys are all aware of what's going on in, in stat wise and you know unbeknownst to them like I've got a pretty good eye on those things too and uh, she wasn't going to come out until she got it. All right then you had a couple of days to get ready for the Nebraska Cornhuskers a team that we hadn't seen this year and a team that I think has surprised a lot of people and I was really impressed yesterday with Nebraska particularly the way they moved the basketball. I think they're pretty multi-dimensional in offense. Yeah their freshman posted a really good job um, get, especially in the second half getting position deep position on us and you know I just thought we we were just scrambling around. Um, our inability to make shots in the first half really, you know, caught up to us. Um, and then we we're trying to dig out of holes, trapping things a little bit more differently than, than we probably do normally. And they uh, they had a scrambling, and every time they, they we were scrambling, they they stepped up and made an open three. You know, I think they were 10 and one on their home floor coming in yesterday, and they averaged 87 points a game, and that's always been a program. And I think you you go back consistently to the times we played there, probably as much as any team in the Big Ten that feeds off its home crowd. They are an entirely different team at home than they are away from home. Yeah, the, you know, I think I don't know 4,500. I think was the count there, but it's really the biggest road environment we have been in. You know, Michigan is a top five team, top ten team, and wasn't a bad, it wasn't a tough environment. No, because last, it was snow up there last Monday, yeah. and there's hardly anybody there. Maryland wasn't a tough environment for our team. Michigan State really wasn't a tough environment, so that was probably the first time we really had experienced that as a group. Um, you know, obviously Sunday might be a little different. It might be a little different down um, there in Bloomington. But uh, <laughs> that's okay. We'll uh, we'll be ready for those guys. Uh, let's talk, though, about uh, Jayla Smith. We're going to have her on a little bit later on in the show, but we know that Jayla really is just scratching the surface of what we think we can see from her. Double figures here the last two games and she came out and hit four three-pointers for you yesterday yeah and it's not just her ability to shoot the basketball it's you know her athleticism and length to, to get points in the paint and put pressure on the other team's defense not really something we have you know Abby, Abby and, and Brooke can can get to the paint and do those things but they're not somebody who can get somebody in foul trouble um, and Jayla just has a different a different gear um, than, than most kids on our team and she was she was special and we needed her to be special um, obviously with Madison going out and not getting back in the game so um, it, we'll take that for the next month and a half and then the next three years with uh, number three. There you go. We're coming to you from Wolfie's. We'll have more of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. After this, this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Open look, kick back out to Jayla Smith. She's had a couple of good open looks. Athleticism too. She's long, she's able to jump well, and she's so strong. And takes that pass, goes right up with it, and is able to finish. Moore starting to heat up. She knows she needs to. Sort of halftime adjustments they talked about in their locker room. See maybe what they run. Long three, knocked down by Brooke Moore. Janae Terry isn't 100%. Usually with that much pressure in her face, she'd take Hybe and She's content to get back into this shorthanded as Janae Terry with it up top. Three on the way and finally knocked down the three-pointer. Very happy now that she's seen one go through. One of seven from range. Widener goes underneath, tries the reverse. There's Widener on Terry. Open look here for Harden and Harden has back-to-back three-pointers. Cassidy Harden is a great shooter, and as everybody knows, in order to be a great shooter, you have before they turn it over. So again, feeds into their philosophy of shoot a lot of threes because they're guard-oriented. Um, and then also she's joked that they want to do that before they... 
Rebound to Brooke Moore. Here is Smith, three on the way. Knocked it down. Russell by Waltman to get the rebound. Moore saw the open lane, takes it, draws the foul, and one opportunity for Brooke Moore. You saw that long rebound. Waltman was able to gather it in, and Brooke Smith had to handle the pressure without turning it over, as we see. Good tip by Terry to force the turnover. Kick out for the open look. Jana Smith, her third three-pointer. Cassidy Harden drives in one of the rare two-point tries you'll see Harden take. There is Smith driving in. Smith off glass. Welcome back to Wolfies. We're keeping our eye on a battle tonight in Ann Arbor. First place in the Big Ten at stake. And right now, uh, late in the first quarter, Michigan leading Indiana 19-9. If Michigan wins that, they actually move ahead of Indiana in percentage points atop the conference. We thought after the game last Monday night that Michigan was playing better than anybody in the Big Ten. And I think right now, at least through one quarter, they're showing it again this yeah, evening. It, it's really not even close. Um, it, Nas Hillman is just different. Um, I love Caitlin Clark and everything she does it for Iowa, but not. there's just something about Nas right now and the way Michigan's playing defensively. Uh, by the way, we want to wish our best uh, wishes out to, send our best wishes out to Ian McDougal. Ian is our sports information guy for women's basketball. He's, he's here at most of the shows, and thankfully tonight he is not because he and Rachel are at the hospital, and we're told maybe just hours away from becoming parents for the first time. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, he actually texted me this morning, and he said, you know, the sun did come up, but if you want, need to be in a better mood, we're checking into the hospital right now. So I've been thinking about those guys all day and, uh, you know, can't wait, to, can't wait to meet them. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't today her actual due date? I, I think, think I think it is. Actually. Yeah. yeah. How about yeah. that? Yeah. The doctor's got that one. looks like pegged right on. Um, we saw way too much, and I love Jeff. Jess Lipset is one of my favorite people in Purdue athletics, but we saw way too much of her yesterday on the floor. He had four players go down in separate things, so let's start with the easiest. It looks like Cassidy Harden's okay. She, I think she and Brooke Moore collided. Uh, probably the biggest hit of the day was them going for a rebound. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just the way Cass plays, but I think she's okay. She texted me this morning, and we're supposed to get in the gym tomorrow, get some shots up, so she should be all right. Janae Terry had an ankle issue. It looked like late in the first half she came out and she was dragging that leg off the floor but she came out warmed up for the second half and it seems like she'll be okay going forward yeah she should be all right she um she was in the training room today getting treatment um saw her walking around no issues um obviously gonna be sore and tender but uh tough kids should be all right abby ellis went down in the fourth quarter as she was i think trying to take a charge if i'm not mistaken or she was called for a foul in the play maybe it was her running into somebody anyway she went down tried to brace herself with her arm uh, she was holding the arm gingerly but sounds like she's going to be okay as well yeah, she was good. She, she was actually okay to go back in the game, but at that time, you know, it was just out of reach for us and not worth it. Probably the most serious coming out looked like Madison Layden, who hurt an ankle in the second quarter. We couldn't tell. It was, I was, at, the, it was at the other end of the floor from where I was, and she was rolling around. You never know in those situations. Are we looking knee, ankle, mm -hmm. head? What happened? Uh, it is her ankle, and it sounds, again, like you maybe dodged a bullet there as well. Yeah, knock on wood. I actually, when she went down, I thought it was her knee, and then I saw her grab her ankle, and I was like, okay, I'm going to wait a minute. And then Jess and I went out there, and as soon as I got out there, you know, just the tears in her eyes and, and how tough, you know, how tough Madison is like you knew she was done for the day because um, if she could have gone she was she would have gone um, and then x-ray was negative this morning so that's good news uh, you know we'll just uh, try to keep it keep it elevated uh, keep the swelling out and sprained ankles are sprained ankles so you never really know um, on my bet if we play Thursday um, weather pending right um, yeah. I would imagine number 33 would be in uniform uh, Rashea Kyle has been trying to get back she's been hurt since the first week of December we've seen her with and without the scooter here uh, what's the latest on Shay? Um, she's been able to do some some uh, you know some cardio some stuff on the courts um, you know in full transparency kind of took a step back a little bit so we're still evaluating some things um, put her back in her boot maybe on crutches a little bit just kind of um, you know see if we can get things to calm down a little bit uh, you know the most important thing for us is we don't want Shay to have to have surgery in the off season. And um, if we can get Shea back in a healthy manner to, to give us some minutes here at the end of February, the Big Ten tournament or um, whatever it is, then we'll do it. But, um, you know, the, the most important thing is is we put Shea in a position where she doesn't have to, to go under the knife at the end of the year. Right, and the 
biggest challenge you have at this point in the season is time. I mean, you just because you've got to get her given a chance to get back into condition before she can get on the court. So the the time is starting to run a little bit thin there. Yeah, it, it, you know, and it's it, we, we, no crutch, right? Like it, Shay changes everybody's game plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ricky and Ava have done a tremendous job for us in, in what they're doing, but um, Shay just makes your game plan a little bit differently. Could kind of put some pressure and you know can get other teams post players in foul trouble. But um, you know, it is what it is. I'm so proud of Ricky and, and, and who she's become and who who Ava is really starting to, to grow into. Um, you know, I, I, I know we lost yesterday and I feel like we're always on this show after a loss, Tim. I'm tired of having to give back, back, back you know, back bounce wins. Like, I'm really tired of having to do that. Um, but so is our group. You know, like, we, we've got a committed group and uh, I uh, no matter what, I absolutely adore coaching them. Well, as we know, the sun came up yesterday, tomorrow, or today and it will come up tomorrow. So we know we're just going to keep grinding on. And I'm still a chief so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get them you know, next year. We'll, I haven't, we'll, get I haven't, them, we'll get them next year, too. <laughs> I haven't picked that scab. My goodness, what yet. a day it was for me yesterday. Yet. All right, we'll be back here on the Katie Gerald Show in two minutes. It's presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. I want to say hello to our normal watchers tonight. That's uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Remington, Indiana. I'm sure we have several more. There is a question here, and it's something I actually meant to ask you about to, before the last game. In the Minnesota game, there was a long delay. The officials came over, I think it was late in the first half, and they were looking at something at the monitor. It was a play where they called... Purdue, they called uh, the Boilermakers for a rebounding foul when it looked like Minnesota had come over the top, but then they came over and looked at the monitor, and none of us had any idea what they were looking at. Do you have any idea what they were looking at? Yes, but they don't. <laughs> um, I think end of the third quarter, uh, Cass was, had a, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say, or if I get fined at this level, who knows, but Cass had a clear block out, kid jumped over her back, foul on Cass, um, and then Minnesota was arguing that Ricky had put an elbow to someone's throat on a box out. Um, yeah. No way it happened. You know, we've talked, and I, I can't get fined, so I can pretty much say whatever I want. <laughs> um, the, the replay to me has hurt college officiating. And it, because I think it's too easy now for the officials to not bear down and concentrate the way they need to because they know if the play's close, they're going to go over and look at it on the monitor. I don't know if you feel that way, but it seems it's, it was no different to me when they went from two officials to three. I thought the officiating dropped when they did that. Yeah, it just kind of gives, gives them a crutch. Um, I'm not a big fan of the replay. 
Um, I think human error is a part of sports. Um, and to, to have to go to the monitor and, you know, slow the game, the rhythm. I mean, that third quarter, we were actually playing pretty well. And then all of a sudden, like, the last three minutes just drug on. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, not a fan of it. Um, you know, it, and honestly, for the, for the two officials to the three officials, you, you say something to one official, and, well, that's not my call. Well, it, yeah. I mean, okay, but get in position, and, and we'll see. I, you know, I, I, I kid you not, at Marion, I had to call timeouts just so the referees would – take a breather because um, they could never get to position you know one time I think I called time out to him and um, he said do you want a 30 or a full and I said I, I don't know you tell me how much time do you need because you're leaning on the basket over there like <laughs> your your job is affecting my job right now so um, you know I, I I probably can be a little too much I don't yell much at him but I'm quite the smart aleck over there well and, and again I think that it when the replay came in, my understanding was they were only going to look at the beginning at end of game shots. You know, was the shot good before the buzzer, or was it? And now it seems like as time has gone on and on. The other thing that that I would like to see changed, if they're going to keep it, is they should make an announcement over the PA system for the fans who are paying to see the game, mm -hmm. so that they know why this game is being delayed. Yeah, I can I can see that. I I can agree with that. Um, tennis is about the only only replay system that actually works, right? Like, let's throw it on there, see yeah. if the ball is in or out. It's not. Yep. Let's move on. Um, you know, I, I I'm it's it's here to stay. It's you know we actually have challenges in our handbook. Like, but if you challenge, you lose a timeout. Right. What can you challenge? What can't you challenge? It's so complicated. I have no idea. I just you know like I said, human error is a part of basketball. Um, they're gonna make mistakes obviously we make mistakes as players and coaches um, it's just part of the, it's part of sports one of the things and I think when the NBA when they played their playoff season in the bubble that was one of the things I did appreciate every time they would have a replay the official would come over and would announce into the TV okay this is what we're looking at so you at least knew why the game was being delayed yeah you you know I don't, I don't know wait there there's financial sources are a little bit better than ours I, I understand I, that. you know I don't know uh, well we've talked one segment about injuries we've talked one segment about officials two segments we really don't want to talk about anymore. We're going to talk more about your basketball team. We're going to talk about Jayla Smith, though, in just a minute. We're going to bring Jayla up on the show. And uh, again, you know, we've reached that point. Her, her high school season a year ago was just getting into the playoffs. Now, the sectional play is supposed to start. That's why we're having bad weather this week, by the way, because there's sectional basketball in the state. It is a state law. Um, but this is the time, I think, when they start. You, sometimes you see freshmen uh, yeah, I, I hate to say the word wall because I think that's a little bit too strong, but they do start to get fatigue a little bit mentally and physically late in the season. Yeah, um, you know, I think it, what we've done with with Ava and, and Jayla is, you know, we didn't throw them into the fire early. Um, you know, we, they needed to learn and, and go through a lot of things, and um, there's no wall they can hit. There, there's absolutely, if there's a wall, they better run through it because um, <laughs> we can't afford for either one of them to hit that wall. But, you know, they've, they've both really started to come into their own right now, and um, my 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 gut tells me they've got two good two good months left in them. All right, we're going to talk with the reigning Miss Basketball, Jayla Smith. When we come back, it is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. On offense versus Ricky Woolman in the Purdue paint on defense. Janae Terry, clock, clock at six. Harden from the corner. Sinks the three. Two for two tonight. For a lot of games are won and lost your transition defense. Layden misses the mark, but Terry with the offensive rebound. Take a shot deep. Off the rim. Minnesota scoreless in the last four. Janae Terry adds two more to the docket. At the lead to five. Janae Terry taking it all the way to the basket, and she's good for two. Going to take it herself. Boilermakers with some strong defense. Big toss. Abby Ellis foul and gets the bucket. The Boilers. Janae Terry passes into Waltman. Off the board for two. Intense Purdue defense. Gophers 11 of 38 for 29%. Seals it off, gets the steal, and gets the bucket. What was an eight-point lead comes back to seven. One, and the crowd's going to let her hear it. Quick pass into Waltman. If it works once, intercepted by Madison Layden. She's going to look to reset the offense here. Quick pass out to Terry. Harden from three. Knocks it down. Purdue put up. Get themselves back into this game. Layden with the right hand behind her back. That was filthy. 3.56 left to play. 49-38, Boilers lead with 3.40 to play. Janae Terry putting that one up, gets her own rebound. 
Gopher swarming around her face, but she gets it in. Janae Terry putting that one up, gets her own rebound. Gopher swarming around her face, but she gets it in. Be urgent, but not urgent enough where you're making mistakes. Waltman into the lane, gets an easy two. As Misha tried to dump it out to the corner. Janae Terry, good for two. And that's a triple double for Janae Terry. Two triple doubles in one season. We are witnessing history. It is time for the Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Uh, we're going to focus on one particular person because she had a great week. In fact, she was named the player of the week in her league this week, and that is Andriana Keys playing in Romania. She's playing on the first place team there. Her team is 16-1, and one, and Andriana's a big reason why. In her last two teams win an 84-59 victory. She had 27 points, three rebounds, and four assists, and she is actually fourth in the league in scoring at better than 20 points a game. So they're just about ready to get into the playoffs before too long, and Keys is having a big season for Romania, so congratulations to Andriana Keys. We hope we have a future Pro Boiler sitting next to us, and Jayla Smith, the reigning Indiana Miss Basketball. Welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about your background. You have uh, one brother. Is that my understanding? Right? Yes, sir. Younger Older brother. or younger? He's younger. He's a junior in high school. All right. So you've been able to push your younger brother around, I'm sure, for years and years, right? Yeah. We go at it a lot, but yeah, I've been pushing him around. Is he a good athlete? Mm, I pretty much took that from him, but <laughs> he can he can do some things at times. Uh, we know that you were a great basketball player in high school. Was was basketball your only sport, or were you a multi-sport athlete? Basketball was my, mainly my only sport and something I just focused on. I mean, people look at me and thought I run track or wanted me to do track or volleyball, and I thought about it, but basketball was my main focus. Uh, and you did very well at Lawrence North High School. You led your team to a couple of state championship games. You lost your sophomore year, right, but you won your junior season. And in fact, uh, in that game, you had 22 points and you beat your future teammate, Madison Layden. Now, we had Madison on earlier this season. Mm -hmm. She had very bad memories of that game. Yeah. I'm guessing that your outlook was a little different on that one. It was different, especially my sophomore year of losing. That, that hurt me a lot. I mean, I was younger, and I think going into the next year, like, I had a lot of goals set. That was my biggest goal, to get all the way to that state championship and especially win that for Coach Give. I mean, it's something that we all wanted. So we knew as the season went on that I knew we, was gonna, we were going to play Madison, and that's just a big game. We knew how good they were, and the competition was really good. So we know we really wanted that. So they had beaten you the year before in the championship game, and you got your revenge. You played all 32 minutes in that game. Yes, Eight sir. of 12 from the field. Yes, sir. 22 points. Uh, what does it feel like to walk off the floor a state champion? It feels great. I know a lot of girls want that, especially in their high school careers. A lot of girls don't get to experience that, and especially how close that we got last year. I just think that was a great experience, and being in a stadium like that full of your friends and family, like it's a great experience. Uh, your senior year, uh, another outstanding season. In fact, you were named Miss Basketball, the 10th Miss Basketball that we've had in the Purdue program. What is that? Is it a phone call that you get? How do you find out? And again, what was your reaction to, to that's, I mean, the biggest honor a player in the state can get. Yes. I just, first growing up and like being younger, I like had a lot of girls um, in front of me. And I just never saw me being Miss Basketball. And as I got older, like my sophomore, junior year, and like I saw that I could be a chance of me getting Miss Basketball. So I looked more into it. And it's just a very exciting thing, I'd say. You know, there are a lot of responsibilities a Miss Basketball has to have, but you're a role model for yeah. girls all across the state and for boys because, uh, you know, a lot of, you get a lot of young kids coming to your basketball games. Mm -hmm. Does that add any pressure more off the court just to make sure, hey, People are looking at me now. I miss basketball. They see me in a little different lens. Yeah, I, it was more pressure on me, I have to say. I mean, I was a little nervous at first because I know, like, a lot of girls look up to me and, I mean, family members and just my mom and dad. I mean, I just want to do good at the end of the day. So every time I step in that court, I'm wanting to do good, and I know that I can do good. So it was a little bit of pressure on me. I'm sure there were a lot of colleges that wanted your service. What was it about Purdue that brought you up I-65 here to West Lafayette? 
I mean, at Purdue, I just a school that I've always saw myself going to. Other schools I didn't even talk to at times because I just knew I had my mindset at Purdue. It was a great program, and I know I could earn, like, just to have great opportunities here. Now, Brittany Rayburn was, uh, I don't know if she's still here or not, but she was here before. Were there players at Purdue that you really looked up to or tried to model your game after? Yeah, I have to say that. I mean, watching, I would watch a lot of Purdue, especially this is committing. I mean, I saw a lot of girls and a lot of, like, I have to say, like, last year I know people, they, like, you, the program was struggling. So I just knew coming here I could bring a lot. All right, we're going to talk about this season and beyond with Jayla Smith when we come back. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. <laughs> okay, one more. Presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. Michigan leading Indiana 30-21 to late in the first half. Indiana had tied that game, but Michigan's on a 9 nothing run. Um, as we're sitting here watching this, Jayla, you've played both of those teams, and you're going to play another one of the teams, Indiana, again on Sunday. What are you looking for? When you watch a game like this, are you looking at anything in particular, or are you just watching like a fan? I'm looking for things that my team and I could do better. You know, Indiana, I didn't play. Uh, I was sitting out the game before, but I just think there's a great opportunity just for to win that game. Uh, by the way, uh, we didn't mention in her high school career, and I think it's important to mention along with her athletic abilities, that uh, Jayla Smith was on the honor roll every semester she was in high school. So congratulations on Thank that. You. How has the academic transition been <laughs> coming to West Lafayette? It's been hard. I have to say that, especially in high school, it's totally different. I mean, I have to stay on top of it and managing my time. You know, you have practice and games, and then at the end of the day, you have to make sure your grades are right, or else there's nothing that nothing's gonna happen. You're on the court that could jeopardize you playing and stuff. So it was a big tr transition for me. You know, that's been the same story. I think I've talked to athletes now for 40 years, and they talk about the biggest transition coming from high school to college. Not just the size and the speed of, of whatever sport they're playing. But all of a sudden, mom and dad aren't there exactly. every day, 24 hours a day, to tell you what to do. You got to, you've got to decide yourself what to do. Time management becomes pretty important. It does. I mean, I've always had my mom and dad there, especially my mom. You know, she's telling me, did I do my homework? Did I do this? And reminding me sometimes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to get on it. But now I know, like, now I have to look at my planner. Now I have to just know that I have to get things done. Well, you've come on offensively these last two games, 26 points in the last two games. You hit all four of your three point shots are you feeling more comfortable offensively right now I have to say I am feeling more com like more comfortable and I feel more confident I mean I just now see like I know I can do these type of things and at the end of the day I want my team to win I want us to win and I know that we can go far there was a play I think it was in the Minnesota game last week where we saw I think uh, some of your potential really come through and that was on a fast break where you hit a different gear when you hit midcourt and you blew by the Minnesota defense like they were stuck in cement and I think that's the kind of thing that fans can look forward to seeing from you for the next three years yes sir you know everybody's telling me get to the basket because they know I can like I'm quick off my feet and I can just put the ball in the basket I can just be more quicker than girls on that first step. Uh, tell me a little bit about your teammates. So who makes So I look at Abby and Janae and Brooke. Of course, they have more experience, and I'm watching them. I know Madison's only a year older than me, but she's she's been through a year of this. So I pretty much follow them, and I want to make myself become a leader one day. So. 
I pretty much follow them. And my guess too, Jayla, is that the fun starts at the top because it seems like Katie Gerald has a really good time coaching this basketball team. She tries to keep y'all loose. Now there are times she has to pull everybody into line, but even during games, we see her laughing at times and trying to relax everybody. Exactly, and that's what I love most about KG. Like, I just love her energy, and especially me meeting her for the first time and talking to her, I just knew, like, this is where I want to be and this is who I want to be coached by. Well, that's a good thing because she's going to be here a while, and you are too. Jayla, good, uh, good luck the rest of the season. Congratulations on an outstanding freshman year, and I think the best is still yet to come. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll have the coach back with the two-minute break coming up. Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. To the high right wing on the dribble. Step back, deep three. Oh, my goodness! Triple time! Jaden Ivey! Who has the lead? A great foul by Aaron Wheeler, and this game has gone final. The Boilermakers have just knocked off the 15th-ranked team in the country on their home floor. Hunter, the senior, guarded by the freshman Branham. Puts it on the deck down to four seconds. Hunter in the corner. Ivey for the win. He got it! Some major onions! Get them organized! Remember back in the day when you taught me to live and I taught you to pray? We went in the battle together, no matter the weather, we never delayed. You gave me commands, I always obeyed, I never let you go astray. I Never thought I'd see the day that I'ma just tell them I rose up I'm a survivor Fight for my life Tony Ersland doesn't take a second seat to anybody. I've, I've always said that. I've just always loved the way that you guys run your program, the way that you do things. Wrestling is, is supposed to be the avenue for the rest of your life. Uh, and, you know, there are people that have had plenty of success on the mat from a wins-loss perspective that uh, unfortunately probably have, you know, taken some, some bad paths. So yep. it's big picture. I mean, you want, and I don't want to speak for you, Tony, but I'm, I'm, I'm probably safe in saying, you want guys that go on and have success. And when they run into you 30 years later, they look at you in the eye and thank you. And that is powerful. That, that is powerful stuff. Weather permitting, the Boilermakers will play Northwestern Thursday night at Mackey Arena. Uh, I don't know if there's been any conversation with you in the conference or you in the uh, administration, but we know that there's a winter storm coming. We don't know uh, if Northwestern's going to be able to get here Wednesday or Thursday. Have, are you talking any contingency plans yet at this point? Uh, just talk briefly and, and had Ken uh, reach out to their sport admin to um, the possibility of playing Friday. The, the problem is I think the storm ends a little bit early earlier in Chicago, but it's supposed to go a little bit longer into for us on Thursday. Um, if that doesn't work out, obviously we want to play the game. Um, the, the next date would be maybe the 15th, so we'd go 13th, 15th, 17th um, that week, and then again on Sunday. Um, but for our basketball team, I, I, I literally I told the Big Ten office, like, we'll just play basketball. Just tell me tell me when and where and who we're playing, and, and we'll make sure we can get there. Set up the hoops in the parking lot, and you're good to go. Uh, I want to talk about your opponents here in a minute, but I do want to mention or ask you the question, the same question I asked Jayla. When you're named Miss Basketball, you know, that's a responsibility. Did you feel pressure? Did you feel like that added more eyeballs to what you did on and off the court? Uh, not for me. Uh I don't think so. I, I, it, I think we live in a different era now. For me, I didn't have to worry about social media as much. Um, I didn't have to worry about having a bad game and it being on social media right away. I didn't have to worry about all that stuff. Um, and that's just honestly like how my parents raised me. You know, I, I'm 37 years old and I'm pretty sure they'd still whoop my butt if I did something wrong. So um, there's no doubt about that in my mind. Um, but no, nah, you know, I just think that the era of social media puts a little bit more pressure. Uh, but Jayla and I have had those conversations. Like, you know, there, there is a responsibility being from Indiana and, and playing here and what that, you know, Brittany can tell you the same thing, what that means. Um, um, you know, and, and she's, this kid is growing up, 
um, you know, she's she's going to be something very, very special in our uniform. All right, let's talk a little bit about your first opponent this week, Northwestern, and a player who seems like she's been there forever, uh, Veronica Burton, who is probably the best athlete in the Big Ten. Her brother, for those I think who most people know, Austin, is a quarterback on the football team here. Veronica Burton, probably the best defensive player, in the, at least in the conference. Yeah, no probably about it. Um, one of my favorite players to watch in the league, she can do it all. Um, you know, we we were just talking back there. I think on the season we have like 150 steals as a team, and she's got 75 by herself. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, these, those numbers are just crazy. Um, offensively, they've kind of moved her off the ball, so she's allowed to be a little bit more aggressive um, in the half court. But uh, a special basketball team, a young basketball team, but, you know, Joe does it better than anybody. Um, and if we do get a chance to play on Thursday, um, I'm sure nobody will be as prepared as what Joe will have his basketball and team. And you look at the rest of there. there are a lot of new faces. You mentioned they're a young basketball team, but the one thing we know about Joe, if there has been a defense or an offense invented, you're going to see it Thursday night because he'll throw everything yeah. and the kitchen sink and the bathroom sink and all the other sinks at you. Yeah, um, you know, just trying to. We in assembly hall. Did you have good shooting games? Bad? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all I meant. Uh, that, I'm going to end it right there. All right, final segment of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union's coming up. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. On offense versus Ricky Woolman in the Purdue paint on defense. Janae Terry, clock at six. Harden from the corner. Sinks the three, two for two tonight. For a lot of games are one and lost, your transition defense. Layden misses the mark, but Terry with the offensive rebound. Take a shot deep. Off the rim. Minnesota scoreless in the last four. Janae Terry adds two more to the docket. Got the lead to five. Janae Terry taking it all the way to the basket, and she's good for two. Gonna take it herself. Boilermakers with some strong defense. Big toss. Abby Ellis foul and gets the bucket. The Boilers. Janae Terry passes into Waltman. Off the board for two. Intense Purdue defense. Gophers 11 of 38 for 29%. Seals it off, gets the steal, and gets the bucket. What was an eight point lead comes back to seven. One, and the crowd's going to let her hear it. Quick pass into Waltman. If it works once, intercepted by Madison Layden. She's going to look to reset the offense here. Quick pass out to Terry. Harden from three. Knocks it down. Purdue put up, getting themselves back into this game. Layden with the right hand behind her back. That was filthy. 3.56 left to play. 49-38, Boilers lead with 3.40 to play. Janae Terry putting that one up, gets her own rebound. Go for swarming around her face, but she gets it in. Janae Terry putting that one up, gets her own rebound. Go for swarming around her face, but she gets it in. Be urgent, but not urgent enough where you're making mistakes. Waltman into the lane, gets an easy two. As Misha tried to dump it out to the corner. Janae Terry, good for two, and that's a triple-double for Janae Terry. Two triple-doubles in one season. We are witnessing history. This week's game plan is presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more at PurdueFed.com. We talked a little bit about the opponents. Let's talk about Purdue, though, for this uh, segment because, um, you know, I think uh, we saw on Thursday night, certainly offensively, you moved the ball pretty well. Um, were you happy with the offense yesterday in the Nebraska game, uh, aside maybe from those five minutes in the first half or first quarter when you couldn't score? We go through those quite a bit. No? Yeah, well, we it, do. It, 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 that's we do. why it's basketball is a game of runs. Yeah, they tell us we, that. We do. Um, you know, and we're not naive or short of knowing what our limitations are offensively. Um, but, you know, I thought we got some good looks. And, you know, you always – it's never as good as it, as it seems and never as bad as it seems. And you go back and you watch it on film. Um, even watching out film, I thought we got some really good looks. thought we had some bunnies inside that just didn't go our way. But I thought – Nebraska missed some bunnies too. That you know, really, they could have been up by 25 at mm -hmm. halftime. Just the way, um, the way we shot it. Um, you know, we put we scored the ball in the in the second half. Just uh, you know, got 
too big of a deeper hole? You know, sometimes with, with a game like that, it just takes one basket to stop that run. You know, and, and we know that it, it, but the coaches always talk about trying to minimize your run, minimize the other team's runs, maximize yours. And just one bucket sometimes can make such a big difference. And, and you don't get in those 13 nothing holes. Yeah. And, and honestly, like we were t talking about today, we we're a team that I mean, we compete and we play really, really hard. Um, and so in. It, we're handcuffed at times offensively, but we put our we put ourselves in good situations and we get good looks and they don't fall. Mm -hmm. How deflating that can be, and then how much more perfect we have to be on the other end um, to figure it out and make up for that. And I, I just think that that was like the perfect storm against us uh, at Nebraska. And then obviously with with you know Mad going out early and you know what she does for us, not just offensively, but she covers a lot of holes for us defensively um, with her length and 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 smart. So. Um, uh, you know, good good opportunity for us to learn and grow. I mean, we were on the road. Nebraska is 10 and one or whatever. Like we weren't supposed to win the game, but um, last night was a hard one for me to swallow. I just, I, I we're better than that, um, and, and I don't know that we're if we're better than Nebraska, but I. No, I do. I, I think we're better than Nebraska. Well, the great news about athletics is right up until the last game, there's always a next game to play. And you got two games this week and a chance to really turn things around. I mean, think of where we'll be next Monday night if we can talk about wins over Northwestern and Indiana. I would love to not love, love, love not to come here on Monday after a loss. Well, let's see if we can get that done. Good luck this week. Thanks, Tim. All right, the Boilermakers against Northwestern. Again, weather permitting on Thursday night. It'll be a 6.45 airtime, 7 o'clock tip. And then Sunday, the Boilermakers travel to Bloomington a little bit early your start time on Sunday than normal. That's a 1 o'clock tip, so we'll have that one starting at 1245. Thanks to our producer Roger Forsyth, our on-site engineer Wes Scott. Next Katie Gerald show coming up next Monday right here at Wolfie's at 710. For the head coach, this is Tim Newton, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. <laughs>